you about it. Hi, everybody. So we've all had that experience, okay? But another experience that I think you're all having is where and when does augmented reality become a real reality? It becomes mainstream, main, main street. So every wave of technology starts in this kind of space where it's application specific, targeted, purpose built, fixes a very specific problem. It's not a platform, it's not this wonderful future, but it's solving someone's real problem. And every one of us has that story about the time you got stuck three times. You went home with a bruise, your mom got stuck three times, went home with a bruise. Did I just have the clicker? Click. So, um, so that's, here's an, here's an example of where that was. We all have our smartphones today. Smartphones started 20 something years ago. All right, so this product from Symbol Technologies, which I happen to be the product manager of 20 years ago, um, was a mobile computer, a display, a keyboard, wireless, all purpose built and all solved the problem is the inventory in stock. Um, years later, it generalized, Palm, Blackberry, all of that. And then finally today, it's ubiquitous and there's market leaders and now we're all using that as platform. So here's the equivalent in healthcare of augmented reality. Augmented reality is being used today, every day, in over 3,000 hospitals around the world by nurses who have never heard the term augmented reality. So it's a device that you shine on the body and it solves a very specific problem. In adults, 40% of IVs miss on the first stick. In children, 50 to 60% of IVs miss on the first stick. In neonates, it gets worse, okay? So there is a real world problem and we solve the real world problem using augmented reality. We shine it on the body and it shows you where the veins are. And it's being used in a number of different, different applications. So for IV start, I need to know where the vein is and I need to know where the valves are and where the bifurcations are. So you'll see it being wiped, the blood disappears, comes back, that tells you val where valves and just looking at the picture tells you where bifurcations are so you can successfully start an IV. In the other application where you saw them working on the forehead, what is it, what's that showing? It's another application where I wanna know where the veins are so I can miss them and that's cosmetic injectables. So if anybody knows, that, knows someone who's gotten Botox or Juvederm or one of those injectables, one of the big fears is uh, social downtime because it's very, uh, very recognizable bruising. So if you go get Botox and you have those bruises on the temple, all your friends know exactly what happened. So many cosmetic, uh, cosmetic practitioners today are using our device as a selling tool. So you can come to me, I'll give you your Botox and no one will ever know. So, so, so this, is, this is the kind of thing, lots of different patient types. One of the things this is really excellent for because the way they find veins today is through touch and when your skin's light enough, through, through vision. If you have very dark skin, it becomes very difficult to find the veins. You don't get those visual cues. Our device sees right through that and projects back onto the body, um, back, back onto the body. So I'm gonna have Joe spend a few minutes and give you a feel for the technology and how we got to where we got to. So let's talk about the technology. And, and I think a different, the technology we're showing is different than much of the technology shown uh, on the floor below. It is purpose built. And part of the reason for that is we don't want to sell the technology. We, we don't want to confuse um, our user. Our user is a nurse. Um, people go into nursing because they care about patients, not because they love technology. As Vinny mentioned, augmented reality does not show up in any of our literature. Um, what we're trying to do is to imagine a future uh, where ordinary people can see veins. And so that's what the product does. So we purposely um, start from a blue button. One button turns the device on and projects the veins. Second thing is it has to be completely easy to use. It has to be as if there's a magic light that shows through the skin where the veins are. So how do we do that? So we do that by combining a camera, effectively a camera and a projector. It's a laser-based uh, device. But in real time, we're uh, at 120 frames a second, we're sampling an image, processing that image, and then reprojecting that image. 10 milliseconds latency. Now that's a critical number, because at 10 milliseconds, 
you move from uh, reality to um, synthetic. Greater than 10 milliseconds, there's lag. So uh, as Benny pointed out, um, neonates, children, are very difficult to stick. They move. They're not uh, you know, a fixed item. They're not a piece of equipment. I, there was a couple of demos that I saw downstairs. I wish you know, I had something that wasn't moving. My patient is moving. Um, we're a handheld device. We found that being a handheld device was essential because people have veins at different positions. We needed a device that could move. Now, we do have hands-free stands that allow you to um, hold the position, hold the device so you can perform the procedure, but we find during the survey you want to move the device around. You want to sort of engage with the patient. So having a handheld device allows you to do that. So you're moving, so you'd like that image to correlate with those veins. The other aspect of it is it is a handheld device. Um, you're going to move it up and down. It has to be accurate. Um, children, uh, have veins below two millimeters wide. A, a typical child stick is a two millimeter wide vein and a one millimeter um, uh, needle. Um, neonates go down to half a millimeter wide. So I have to resolve very small objects and I have to do that accurately. Um. Okay, so, so the, the core issue here was, I'll, I'll give you an example. Our first generation product was if I rotated it this way, it had to be held perpendicular to the run of the veins. It was just a, it was a simplification in the earliest technology, and we had to do that. So we needed to teach nurses to hold the device perpendicular to the veins. Not possible. Not okay. possible at all. Not at all Not possible. At all. What's Science. perpendicular? Okay. Um, and, and when you explained it to them and taught them, it was not sticky knowledge because an individual nurse doesn't start 300 IVs. They're not a factory worker on an assembly line doing the same thing over and over again. They have a ton of other things they do. So they'll start an IV and then hours later they'll start an IV. What we found was any, of the t any technology that required sticky knowledge was going to fail in the healthcare environment. It's not like a surgeon who's gonna practice and do this stuff over and over again. Um, you know, the, the, our favorite customers are anesthesiologists because they're, they're tech geeks by nature. So they want to know how it works. They want to know how it works and all that kind of stuff. But the but nurses know, the, you know, these are folks who they have a job to do and they've got to get it done. Okay. So um, just uh, push the click button. Wait. Oh, there it is. Okay. So I think. You know, we, we, we have what we believe is a proof of concept for everybody in this room that augmented reality makes sense. Augmented reality is something you should be spending your time doing, putting your energy into in healthcare because it's an opportunity to change how things are done in a really fundamentally important way. Not everybody who goes to work every day gets to impact the kind of things that you do, um, you know, make people healthier, make people make people live longer, make people have better experiences when, when engaging with healthcare. So we've been very fortunate with AccuVane to have that impact. Uh, we are reaching a point where we have become standard of care. The Infusion Nurses Society in the United States um, makes the recommendations for the standard operating procedures for IV processes. Vein visualization is now part of their standard of care recommendations. Uh, we have hospitals uh, with as many as 80 units um, for example, NYU in New York has, uh, has 80 units uh, all over the country. So every IV gets started with these things. Um, by our calculations, we collect data when these come back to service, how often they're used, and we know how many we've put out and those sorts of things, that we've helped over 10 million patients. And finally, the latest study says you are 3.5 times more likely to get one stick when you meet a clinician with an AccuVane than without and then, oh, by the way, commercially, we'll, cl we'll have sold $100 million worth of augmented reality gear by the end of this year. Oh, that's, that's AR meets our everyday experience, right? Now, who has a question for? Yes, Drew. Uh, would, for, since you're so far along in this process, would you take just a minute and talk about like the regulatory approval, the timeline that <laughs> might have had? I know, I know, I knew it was going to be a problem, but I mean, m a lot of people here don't know that. Approval in 110 countries. And how long 
worldwide. Um, it uh, depends on the country, and that's the reality. So, so um, we're, we're approved every, you know, United States, China, Russia, EU. Um, it, it goes from uh, zero, there are a lot of countries in the world you can sell without any regulatory approval, to three years. Post completion of the product with all testing, reports, inch thick documents, you know, maybe, you know, that much documentation, done for the product development, and then you invest three years to get regulatory approval before you can sell the product. He, he doesn't like to brag. He got our first 100 countries in one year. No, it wasn't quite one year, but it was pretty damn <laughs> it was close. close to one year. Okay. So, um, yeah, a lot of it, and so the other uh, part I'd also comment is a lot of it has to do with planning. So you have to say, am I looking to build a product, or am I looking to build a product that's going to sell and be used by people? So uh, Vinny talked a little bit about the number of procedures done, what, three million IVs in the United States per day tens of millions around the world. We sell, I mean, as I said, we sell in 70 plus countries today. That's product in country. All right, thank you. I wanna make sure we have uh, enough time for all of our speakers. So these, uh, this panel will be around at the end if there's any uh, additional questions. Well, let's give it up for Acuvain.